Welcome to a new video on Generative AI. My name is Satyajit Patnaik and I welcome you all to my channel. In case you are new to this channel, I would appreciate if you can like, share and subscribe the channel. In the past, I have done a lot of interview series, a lot of interview Q&A, top 10 interview Q&A, top 10 scenario based interview Q&A, especially on Power BI and data analytics. And many of you have also commented in those videos to come up with similar kind of series for SQL, for, for machine learning, for deep learning, for generative AI. So I'm already preparing contents on that, but I don't know which one to prioritize. In case you have a specific priority, let me know in the comment section. Let's say you want to see generative AI interview Q&A series. I will come up with that first. So let me know in the comments and accordingly we will take it ahead. So the agenda of this video is very simple. The most important question asked in an interview is explain me one of your projects. This is the very first question that is asked after, after they ask about explain me about yourself. That's the very non-technical question. The very first technical question is explain me one of your projects. Now, irrespective of whichever domain you are coming from, from generative AI, from machine learning, data analytics, it could be anything. The very first question is explain me one of your past projects. This is a very crucial step in going forward in the interview process because uh, as, as you might have known that tech recruiters or managers usually take five to sec seven seconds to go through a resume. If you are shortlisted, if you are called for an interview, usually in the first 15 to 20 minutes, interviewers know whether they want to hire this person or not, or at least whether to move ahead with this candidate or not. Even if your interview timing is 45 to one hour, in the first 15, 20 minutes, they already have a basic knowledge whether this person is good. And out of this 20 minute slot, the first question which is explain me one of your project plays a vital role. You cannot really stretch this question to 30 minutes and you cannot really answer this question in just two or three minutes. It has to be perfectly done in around 10 to 15 minutes. Now, how usually I approach to this question if I am asked, I will be talking about that. So this video is all about that. I will explain you how I answer in my interviews. And of course, there are some tips and tricks that I want to give you, which you need to follow and I'm pretty much sure the chances of getting selected will be higher. So stay tuned till the end and I will be sharing you some of the tips and tricks after my interview is done. So let's get, get ahead. So we will be explaining one of the generative AI projects in this video. See you in the video in case you have any other requirements on any random topic related to data analytics, data science or AI. You know what to do. Comments. See you in the video. So whenever I am asked about this topic, uh, which is explain me one of your projects, usually I get started with some of the basic things and I usually ask my interviewers whether I can share my screen and explain them the project. So that is my usual strategy when I am attending a interview online. When I'm attending an interview face to face, that is even better for me because I usually get uh, get into the interviews with pen and paper or if I have a whiteboard I, I usually love doing whiteboarding uh, whiteboarding sessions so I love explaining the project on the whiteboard directly but before getting into this question let me just tell you that you know getting the interview call is the first major uh, victory right if your interview is getting scheduled that means your resume has made through always make sure that because in your in your experience, you might have written down multiple projects, right? But when you're applying for a certain company, uh, they might be interested in what use cases they have in mind. For example, you have done a lot of things into telecom, into insurance, into banking. But let's say uh, the company that you're applying for, they are majorly into telecom. So it is always recommended that whenever they ask about a project, you should focus on telecom. Or else, let's say you have bunch of experience into NLP, machine learning, deep learning and generative AI. 
but the company that you are applying for are more interested in generative ai or in nlp so explaining them a machine learning project is not impactful it might just be fine with them but eventually they will be not interested in this project right so make sure you do some sort of research around the company that you are applying for so that your the the the, the projects that you are going to explain are relevant to them okay so that is a tip and trick i usually tell to all of my students so keep it with you now i will be pretending as a candidate and i will be explaining you the project so the question is very simple uh, i have already done my introduction which is uh, i have 13 years of industrial experience out of which 9 years comes from data science ai and machine learning i have been implementing gen ai applications since the last 2 years blah 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 it takes around 2 to 3 minutes to close that and then the next follow up question is explain me one of your projects that you did in the past now of course let's say the company that i'm interviewing with i have already done some of the research on linkedin and on google that they are mostly working on let's say legal documents or they want to create some generative ai applications around rags so this is how my pitch will be so hi so so i'll pretend like a candidate okay hi so one of the projects i would love to explain is uh, well well i have worked on multiple projects um i have worked on machine learning i have worked on deep learning i have worked on natural language processing generative ai everything even i have also worked on uh, cloud uh, environments i have done deployments into several pieces into aws azure and gcp however on azure and gcp uh, azure on aws i have more exposure gcp i have less but it is manageable so let me explain you one of my recent projects that i did which was in the space of generative ai and uh, uh, i used rags for that because uh, it was using uh, custom data so the project was very uh, simple the requirement from the client was uh, let's say let's say i'm take, taking an example of a client imagine my client is uh, let's say flipkart so the requirement by this company was we should have a chatbot let's say a end user is coming to this platform they should have a chatbot chatbot widget where they can ask something about the products or anything from their website let's say as a user i don't want to search computers or laptops i will directly go ahead and ask can i have a laptop within 50000 that means i'm asking in a free text in in natural language and the interpretation should give me relevant answers so the solution to this was uh, we actually implemented some parsers uh, some uh, website scrapers so i will write it down as web scrapers now these are automated web scrapers that we have used which scrape the platform on a daily basis and imagine we have all the information some of the information in pdfs which is uh, you know different page information some of the product information which is in a json format so eventually whatever the format it is it doesn't really matter eventually they are all free text now we take this data and this is where generative ai comes into picture we are chunking down the data so we use some chunk sizes and then we chunk down the data eventually the data is being converted into vector format which is nothing but the vector embeddings and uh, in this project we have used pinecone as our vector database so this vector embedded data goes into pinecone so pinecone here is my vector data vector database okay now there are different vector databases like uh, astra db Uh, and then various others are there but in this case we had used pinecone now just to explain pinecone pinecone is a very simple vector database where you need to create indexes and once your indexes are created you need to map it to your data set so that your vector data is getting stored in specific indexes right so your input data is here auto parsers are here and then embedded data goes into vector database now as a end user basically you have a ui interface which is nothing but your website where you have a widget when you are asking a question let's say the question is 
tell me some laptops within 50,000. Now, here what's happening is basically your input data is then vectorized. And then from here, we are going and referring to the vector database to get the relevant pieces. So here we get the input query plus the relevant information. And this is where the large language model was called. In, in our case, we had used Llama 3, but you know, this can be replicated with any kind of models. It could be OpenAI, GPT models, O1, uh, Mistral, Mixtral, it could be anything. And then we have a chat completion and then basically it should be somewhere here and then you get the output. So this is the chat completion. This is a very generic, uh, you know, generative AI flow. You can pick any use case and, you know, any kind of generative AI use case will follow these kind of processes. Apart from that, if you want, I can also explain you one of my other projects, which was also very similar to this. So that project was something like we did it for... Um, did it for a client where they wanted to interpret research papers. So imagine you have a bunch of research papers. It could be 5, 10, 50, whatever it is. Each research paper is chunked, so converted into smaller documents and then vectorized. And then we can store it in a vector database or a vector index. And as a user, when you are asking a question, the question is being vectorized. And then you get the relevant information and there is a chat completion in, and you get the output. So this is a generic flow that usually we follow. Now, this is, this is how you need to explain the project and make sure you talk about those things that you are confident on. For example, you are confident on the chunking part. What, how many types of chunkings are available? What could be the chunk size? What could be chunk overlap value? If you are completely aware of that, you can emphasize more on that. If you are completely aware of vector databases, you can focus or emphasize on that because your focus, your, uh, your enhance, uh, what do you say? Your focus should be on those topics that you are completely aware of because the follow-up question could be on that topic. Now, what I usually do is, let's say, uh, for me, I am aware of the entire processes. I know all of these processes, but just in case as a student, imagine I'm good with vector embeddings. So here I can focus a little bit more on the vector embeddings part. So you can talk about, oh, here we are doing vector embeddings. Okay, uh, just in case you don't know what vector embeddings are in simple format, uh, vector embeddings are nothing, nothing but let's say there is a text called as how are you first of all you are chunk uh, you are creating tokens so let's say i'm talking about a simplest token which is what token now tokenization is done and then you are using some vectorization technique to convert it into vectors and if you want, you can again go deep dive. Oh, let me talk about some of the vector embeddings. Some of the vector embeddings are Glove, Fast Text. We also have Word to Vectors. And some of the traditional uh, vectoring techniques are Bag of Words, CBOW, Skipgrams, and, and, and blah, blah, blah. So, which basically means you are driving the interview to that direction. You are forcing the interviewer to ask some questions related to this because you are already aware of it. If you don't have knowledge on these topics, do not get into that direction. Focus or uh, emphasize on those things that you are completely aware of. In the space of generative AI, there could be bunch of questions. There could be questions on word embeddings, different type of word embeddings, vector databases. Why do we prefer vector database over a scalar database? What is, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, look, uh, what, what do you say? Uh, sensitive hashing. Uh, I, I, I forgot the first letter. L, LS, uh, LSH, right? Locality uh, sensitive hashing. What is that? How do you fetch data from vector databases? How is it faster? There could be a bunch of questions that could come from this. But in case you are completely aware of the entire processes, you should be fine. That's all about how you answer this question. In case you are looking out for... Um, you know, uh, generative AI interview Q&A series, 
you know what to do let me know in the comment section and i will come up come up with a video and that's all about this particular video see you in the next video